So <clears throat> we did a uh, kind of introduction to the convection. As I've said uh, already a couple of times, this is a very complicated uh, topic with tons of details which we are not addressing here. So if you end up for, uh, working in this uh, direction or doing research, uh, obviously you will get much deeper into it. Uh, so we'll conclude by looking at a couple of examples of the types of convection uh, in the atmosphere. Uh, heat flux of 200 watts per meter squared is kind of the estimate in the book uh, in the experiment they show. So here is a good schematic of the uh, two main types of convection uh, we see, the so-called cumulus convection and the cumulonimbus convection. So both are shown, uh, so this one is shown 1 to 4 kilometers and this is shown uh, the top is uh, 1 to 4 kilometers and the top here is 8 to 16 kilometers. So typically uh, happens above the planetary boundary layer which we haven't defined so I won't go too much into it but uh, the cumulonimbus uh, is o both of these obviously are above the condensation level remember we said uh, as the parcel is lifted uh, the uh, water vapor in it condenses and reaches saturation water vapor pressure so that's the condensation level and above that you form clouds and then there are other processes involved in creating a rain uh, and the uh, winds are not constant with height so you can see that as the cumulonimbus reaches um, 8 to 16 kilometers uh, we will see little in a little bit uh, we have already mentioned the tropopause but we haven't exactly said what its height is so if it hits the tropopause then it's gonna have this so-called anvil where the cloud tops uh, spreads uh, horizontally so there's advection of humidity and so on also in these uh, upper level uh, by the strong winds uh, typically winds get stronger uh, in the upper level direction also changes uh, we will see uh, why that is so these are not rain bearing clouds the cumulus uh, clouds uh, the cumulus convection is not a rain bearing convection cumulonimbus is most certainly loaded with uh, moisture right so the vertical uh, velocities can be order 2 meter per second. Uh, in the water tunnel experiment where we did uh, convection uh, by heating from, the belo from below, creating a stratification and so on, uh, estimates of uh, W was half a meter, half 0.5 centimeter per second, right? Uh, how is uh, a heat transported or energy transported uh, across uh, a level, let's say a pressure level in the atmosphere? There are uh, unsteady motions. So in time, there is uh, surges and suppressions of these uh, bursts of vertical motion around the time mean okay so the time mean here is uh, indicated by a bar on top and W prime and T prime are deviations of temperature and vertical velocity uh, from the time mean what time it could be the convection time for example okay so there are vertical motions uh, around uh, a, a constant mean and if there is a net transport by these um, movements, unsteady movements, I don't know exactly what word to use but we will s define it more later as eddies and so on. So the motion is never simple, it's not like air is just rising, expanding and condensing, it happens in bursts let's say. Okay, so rho cp times w prime t prime again averaged over time determines how much energy or heat is actually being transported by this unsteady movement okay so you can get a sense here this is a well distributed population of cumulus clouds over midwestern us so us is very vast continent subcontinent I don't know, it's part of North America. Uh, from East Coast to West Coast, it's almost like going from the uh, East Coast to uh, Europe, for example. That's how big it is. Midwest is uh, 
right in the middle. Um, well, more to the west. But nonetheless, uh, it's a terrestrial uh, region with mountains and plains and uh, so on. So there is a land heating happening and there is uh, cumulus convection happening, uh, which we saw here. So this is the cumulus convection. So those are clouds, they are bright, they change the albedo and so on, whereas cumulonimbus convection uh, happening on the Great Plains of uh, the US uh, is showing. So you can see kind of uh, typical agricultural land in the Great Plains where a lot of corn and wheat and soybean and so on are grown, cotton, I don't know what else. So you can see the clear difference between the cumulonimbus cloud clusters and um, the uh, sorry cumulus uh, uh, clouds and cumulonimbus clouds. So you can see that rain is pouring down here. This is a thunderstorm. Uh, hail and rain are falling down here all the way to the ground. And this is obviously not going all the way up and having the typical anvil structure and so on. But this is the cumulonimbus which has uh, a strong updraft which has a, a produced rising motion through the clouds into uh, warmer air and the top of the cloud does spread out and flatten but not exactly the kind of annual uh, that we saw here but you can go on Google and find plenty of examples of um, very beautiful annuals that spread out uh, in the upper uh, atmosphere. Oh, here is one. So this is a supercell. It's a giant cumulonimbus storm uh, and there is a rotating updraft in it. So when convection gets very strong, there is strong convergence not only at the surface but at various levels feeding this thirsty monster which is climbing and condensing and producing condensation heat and producing uh, buoyancy and rising further all the way to the upper atmosphere and hitting strong winds or the tropopause and producing this um, beautiful anvil uh, here. Okay, So this has so much rotation that it can actually produce uh, things like uh, uh, tornadoes. Okay, So uh, essentially if you have vorticity seeded and then there is enough moisture available a positive feedback can happen and a small scale rotating system called tornado can form and in fact US has these tornado corridor, the so called tornado corridor where uh, every uh, year there is a season of tornadoes. The question is with global warming whether the season is getting longer and stronger and so on. The same questions we face in uh, hurricanes. Okay, So that's a very brief run through uh, convection in the atmosphere. As I've said, this is a very broad topic and we are not going to get into details in this very short chapter. But you can find, I think people like Brian Mapes from uh, the Rosenstiel uh, School of Marine uh, Sciences and Atmospheric Science, Erasmus, uh, produces some beautiful uh, uh, animations from satellite data for clouds and convection and so on. So you should hunt down uh, Brian Mapes's website and see if you can find uh, some beautiful animations of convection. He's the king of convection. He works a lot of convection. He has done a lot of amazing work. Uh, we never got into those kinds of details. The physics is quite complicated. The math is complicated and so on. But here we are just doing basic introduction to convection. <laughs>